Texas Motor Speedway. Newly paved speedway. The same people paved Kentucky paved this racetrack. It's going to be different than what they've ever done here in the past. Kentucky was the first installation of really going to a coarser aggregate and trying to make sure the racing surface is created in a way to optimize racing as opposed to optimizing durability. The track has new configuration in turns one and two. It's wider than the rest of the racetrack. Some of the tracks have been trying to create some differences from track to track to make each venue uh, different than another. Take all those Texas notes that you had, crew chiefs and drivers, and throw them out the window. There is uh, actually a formula on what to do to repave. And then there's, once the pavement is down, there's a process of how to prepare the surface to the best capability we can. We're also trying to manage the drainage of water, so if we do get rain, we can get to racing quickly. When a track gets old, it's fundamentally falling apart. During that process, the asphalt itself has a lot of oils and resins in it that make the, the track quite slick. So the liming process is just trying to extract those out of it without fundamentally breaking down the track. And then there is uh, the process of putting some rubber down and we use several things there. We'll use a, uh, a tire dragon or a tire monster. Putting the rubber down uh, allows us to give drivers another option, another place to go. This racetrack's been very, you know, a couple different grooves. We've seen cars jumping sideways, cars good at the beginning of a run, the end of a run. We've seen passing. We've seen a lot of action. I'm loving this. The ideal world is we get a surface that promotes very good racing and we can very quickly in the first race have the right tire to be there as opposed to iterating a couple of times on the tire. And I think that's a good thing because then it makes the, uh, the racing more fun for our fans.